Okay, hello, welcome to my channel. My name is Silo and in this video, we want to evaluate this integral from 0 to 1 of um, x raised to the power of x. Good. So here with me is McKay and we're going to do it together. Okay, so let's see what we can do. Well, first of all, I'm going to um, use the property uh, that the natural logarithmic function and the natural exponential function are inverses of each other. That means that their composition will produce the identity. Good. So whatever function we have, we'll just produce that function. Okay, so using that rule right there, that means this we can write this as the integral from 0 to 1 of, so this function, look at it as the f of x, we can write it as e raised to the power of, okay, the natural logarithm of that function, which is x raised to the power of x. So now let me show you that it was the function that was there originally, that was x raised to the power of x. Good. Okay, so we close that and then we put the dx somewhere. Okay, now this integral sometimes is called a Bernoulli integral. Actually, it's a very interesting one, though it's not really that uh, fun. <laughs> it's a very interesting integral anyway to evaluate, you'll see. Okay, so let's see what we can do. Well, um, I'm going to use um, some logarithmic properties to push this right down uh, that way. And that means we're going to have this to be the integral from 0 to 1 of e raised to the power of, okay, x times that x that has just been uh, taken out of the power times the natural logarithm of x which is left good and then you put the dx out here okay now is the time to do some very interesting stuff so what do you think we can do from here well um i'm gonna go ahead to um expand this okay using the Taylor series expansion of the natural logarithm sorry of the natural exponential function so for a natural exponential function, we have that e raised to the power of, let's say, sum t. We can write this as the sum. Let's use k as the sum index. As k starts from 0 up to infinity of t raised to the power of k divided by k factorial. Okay, so that is uh, uh, from the Taylor series expansion of the natural uh, exponential function. So that's what we can get. Good. So using that fact where the t is x times the natural logarithm of x okay so let's see what we can do well we can rewrite the integral the integrand as the integral from 0 to 1 so the integrand okay we can write it taking note that t is x times the natural logarithm of x so this is going to be the sum okay the sum as uh, k let's use k k starts from 0 to infinity of t but t is x times the natural logarithm of x so that will be x times the natural logarithm of x and that t has been raised to the power of k so we also raise this to the power of k then we divide everybody by k factorial good and then the denom and uh, sorry out there we have dx so we just put the dx over here okay that's nice isn't it <laughs> okay so let's see what we can do from here well i'm going to continue um now, we have the integral from 0 to 1. Then we have some, uh, after the integral, we have summation. Then inside there, well, if we start with this inside to evaluate this sum, we're really, we're really getting back to the exponential form, which we've done nothing. So what we would like to do would be to evaluate the integral first, right? So switching the order. But we can't do that uh, uh, unless uh, we are sure that this series is, um, is absolutely convergent. So well we can't really be sure so what i'm going to do is that we assume or is it like a claim so i'm going to write it out here like that as we claim okay sorry i'm going to take take it as a claim so i'm going to claim that i can switch the order uh, between the integral sign and the summation sign that is the infinite series sign the summation sign actually then what the, like i said the series must be absolutely convergent so maybe towards the end of the video we're going to analyze whether it's absolutely convergent or not okay good so just by assuming that it's true okay or maybe claiming because i'm sure it will work because i've done it before okay so this will become uh we, we'll switch the order so we'll put the sum outside the sum as k starts from zero up to infinity so let me put the infinity there then the integral well before then notice that um, the k factorial has nothing to do with x so we can pull it out so the integral is only um over the x variable so that'll be x raised to the power of k times the natural logarithm of x raised to the power of k as well divided by oh divided by what okay we've, we've taken out the k 
so just like that then we put the dx over here okay that's nice what the next thing i'd like to do is to make a substitution um yeah you notice that we have some natural log logarithm here if i let x to be if i let x be some exponential form it will work so we say let uh, x be some natural exponential function because again they're not they are inverses so you maybe if i compute natural logarithm with some natural exponential we're going to get some identity out okay but what would that be well i'm going to take minus u the reason is um between zero and one okay um natural logarithm will produce negative results just the way you can just uh, try to guess what might work all right and if it doesn't then you try some other i uh, guess okay so we're going to differentiate what we have so differentiating the left hand side with respect to differentiating um this equation with, re with respect to u we're going to have negative e to the power of negative u du good i'm leaving this space here because i want to make you the subject so making you the subject of formula here you can try that out this will give us negative of the natural logarithm of x take natural logarithm of both sides and then multiply both sides by minus one okay that's how you can get there okay so this is going to be the same thing as maybe i should drop the summation sign and work with the integral well it doesn't really matter let's carry everybody along so that is uh k starts from zero up to infinity of this so this is one over k factorial okay so we have the integral well we've changed the variable so the odd um, the bounds of integrations may change as well good so when x is zero what will you be so you come over here when x is zero well natural logarithm of zero will not be defined so that means this is an improper integral so we have to look at the limit as x approaches zero from above so as we approach zero from from above natural logarithm approaches negative infinity from the graph okay but this is negative outside here means we'll be approaching negative of negative infinity which is positive infinity okay so when x is approaching one from the left well natural logarithm of one is just zero and then zero times this minus one is zero so everything works so that's from inf infinity to zero that is somehow well we're going to switch it that so this is x raised to the power of k but x is e to the power of negative u so let's make the substitution so that'll be e to the power of negative u okay negative u times k that is negative k u good then times the natural logarithm of x inside the bracket so the natural logarithm of x is the same thing as negative u from here so maybe we can put negative u in here then we raise that to the power of k as it is good looking up there then we now take the dx but dx is negative of uh, e to the negative u du okay so we've made the substitution now let's continue good so we're going to pull out some things look at this negative one this is negative u which is the same thing as negative one raised to the power of k times u raised to the power of k so i'm going to take out the negative one like that okay um that will be negative one raised to the power of k that is i'm peeling it off from this u okay then this divide, divide, divided by k factorial then this is the integral well for the order of integration take note of this minus one this is minus one i can use this minus one to switch the order of integration from zero to infinity okay yeah that's one of the properties anyway that's interesting then look at e to the negative u e to the negative ku okay so i'm going to factor out the negative and also i'm going to factor out the u from these two terms okay then we left with k over here we'll be left with one over here good okay so that's nice now um the next thing is this u to the power of k and then we have the du over here okay so let's continue well this integral i don't know if you're familiar with some uh, gamma functions this integral looks like one but it's not really uh, we can make it become better uh this is what i'm talking about um some gamma function uh, is defined as the integral from zero to infinity of let's say e to the negative t times t to the power of n dt this stands for gamma of um n plus one good but this doesn't really have the form because uh, instead of having e to the negative maybe u since we are dealing with u is is some constant or some factor so the the trick here would be to um make a substitution so as a clever substitution i'm going to say let i'm going to call something here 
I'm going to say let um, u become some v divided by k plus 1. I'm doing that so that I can cancel out the k plus 1 when I substitute v for u. Okay, the v term for u. Good. So, but here I have to differentiate. So that means that du will become, well, it's going to be 1 over k plus 1 dv. Okay, that's nice, isn't it? So let's uh, do the substitution. Sorry. Uh, okay, so let's come over here. Let me just do like that. Okay, so let's continue. So with that substitution, it means that we're going to have um, the integral, sorry, not the integral phase, the summation as k starts from 0 up to infinity, okay, of negative 1 raised to the power of k divided by uh, divided by k factorial. Good. Now, look at this. Uh, this is the integral. Now, take note, we're doing a substitution. So, z a k starts from, sorry, uh, u starts from 0. So, when u is 0, take note, v will be 0, okay? I lock it there. When u approaches infinity, v also approaches infinity, yeah. So, that works. Then, we have e to the power of, now, negative, now, k plus 1v, but k plus 1v, that is k plus 1 times u, rather, is going to be the same thing as v. So, I'm going to make a substitution there for v, okay? Good. And then u but u is v over that so i'm going to say v over k plus one and then we have to raise that to the power of k yeah okay good that is this k right here then the du but the u will be replaced with the whole of that that will be the v over k plus one so I'm going to use this over k plus 1 here to increase the power of this k plus 1 in the denominator. The power of k plus 1 in the denominator here is just k. When we increase it by 1, that will be k plus 1 as a power. Good. So that means this is going to become, well, the sum as k starts from 0 up to infinity of... So I'm going to increase the power of k plus 1 here at the bottom. That means we're going to have a negative 1 raised to the power of k divided by k factorial times k plus 1 raised to the power of k plus 1. Okay, so I'm, I've just taken that out of the integral. So this will be left to the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the power of v. Now v to the power of k will be left. v raised to the power of k. Good. And then the dv like that. So you take note of what, what <laughs> I talked about earlier. So we only factor that. We only took out this k plus 1 raised to the power of k plus 1. Right? Good. So you notice that this right here is the... Sorry, there should be a minus. Why did I throw away the minus? Negative. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah, I'm sure some of you must have pointed that out already. This is minus V. Okay, this is minus V. Yeah. Okay. So th that right there is just the um, gamma function. Uh, you can say gamma of uh, K plus 1. Which is the same thing as K factorial. Okay, so let's continue. So this right here is going to be, well, the sum... As k starts from 0 up to infinity of negative 1 raised to the power of k divided by k factorial times k plus 1 raised to the power of k plus 1. Like I said, this right here, which is gamma of k plus 1, is the same thing as k factorial. Okay? And that is just by using uh, the fact that when we have gamma of some gamma of, let me use n plus 1, is the same thing as n factorial. Okay, just the relationship that exists between the gamma function and uh, don't forget that the gamma function is, ge is a generalization of the factorial. Good. Okay, so notice that this k will cancel out with that. k factorial, sorry, cancels out with this. So what we'll be left with is okay, so we'll be left with negative 1 to the power of k divided by this. Okay, um, yeah, that's nice. Now, back to um, this claim, whether or not uh, this uh, switching is possible. So, like I said, it's only possible when the integral is um, is uh, absolutely convergent, okay? That is when the series converges absolutely. So, from what we have here, okay, does this conver con uh, converge absolutely or not? So, that's the question. And we can use the absolute test. In fact, we're going to do this in our next video. So, check our next video and you're going to see uh, the solution to that 
Okay, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. It's a long one. It's a very interesting integral anyway. Please don't forget to share this video with your friends. Subscribe to my channel. I'll continue from the next video. Okay, please don't forget to check back.